In America, in Oklahoma, where that fertilizer bomb went off, they have now got a garden of remembrance. <laughs> and it has come up a treat. <laughs> so, every cloud. <laughs> These kids in American high schools, I'm sure you've read about them, 14, 15, 16 years of age, they go into their high school with automatic weapons and handguns, they go ape shit. They shoot 20 or 30 of their fellow pupils before turning one of the guns on themselves. What is their fucking problem? <laughs> Do they not know where the staff room is? <laughs> they could be heroes! <laughs> you know why so many American kids die in high school massacres? It's because they're not allowed to run in the corridors. <laughs> Take your time with that, that's wrong on a number of levels. <laughs> they say travel broadens the mind. Except with Americans, which tends to widen the arse. <laughs> A lot of people quote the fact that only 10% of Americans have passports. The thing is, they say it like it's a bad thing. <laughs> Don't get the wrong idea, I've got nothing against Americans. Just one came up to me after a show a couple of weeks ago and said he thought I was patronising. <laughs> I said, well, I think you'll find that's pronounced patronising. <laughs> it means when you talk down to someone. Don't worry, I'm not being condescending. I'm far too busy thinking about important things you wouldn't understand. <laughs> There's a company in America now making thongs, you know, the item of underwear, size 26 and over. <laughs> That's big, isn't it? I just question, is it necessary? I think any pair of knickers over size 20 is a thong within four steps. <laughs> We're all familiar with the hungry bum syndrome. <laughs> I saw a woman earlier on the street, looked like she was chewing a toffee. <laughs> I was going to tell you a story about a gig I did recently. I did a gig for Mojo magazine. It's a big, you know, pop magazine. And uh, did a gig. It all went well. I was doing their award show for them. They invited me on. They said, yeah, will you do our awards? I said, my pleasure. Lovely. Lots of rock stars and rock chicks. Be cool. There was the awards there. I was just doing sort of 10-minute stand-up to begin with. I told a slightly anti-American joke. I said, of course, in Britain, we've got to eat as much as you like restaurants, whereas in America, you've got to eat as much as you can. <laughs> you've added that important ingredient, competition. <laughs> So not only could you be enjoying a delicious meal, you could be beating a personal best. <laughs> Thus the necessity for three pockets on the back of your jeans, you fat fucks. <laughs> and a voice from the back of the room shouted, Fuck off! I thought, I presume you're American, are you? He said, yes. I said, think of it as friendly fire. <laughs> He then shouted, fuck off again, but louder. I thought, well, I better deal with this. I said, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, the only reason I got into comedy and doing this kind of thing is because I thought it would be a bit of a fanny magnet. I wasn't expecting a cunt like that. <laughs> At which point, the editor of Mojo magazine, who was sitting just down here, got up and looked like he was going to come around and pull me off. Not like that. <laughs> that was funny. Well done. <laughs> no, no, you go ahead. <laughs> I sort of signalled to him to stop. <laughs> I signalled to him to stop. I said, I'm sorry, sir, it was, a, it was a cheap shot. It's a bullseye, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and I apologise unreservedly, sir. I did not mean to... Well, I mean... The thing was, the, the line got a laugh, but then there was a big, there was an audible, ooh. <laughs> I thought, well, who have I told to fuck off? It was a guy called Anthony Kiedis. <laughs> who's the lead singer of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> and I'd noticed on the way in that he was on the cover of Mojo magazine, and I wasn't. <laughs> I thought, this is a social faux pas of epic proportions. <laughs> I, you know, and I thought, well, I better apologise unreservedly. I said, I am sorry. If I've caused any offence, I'm sorry. I did not mean to call you a cunt. I'm sure you're not. I'm sure you don't have the depth or the capacity to give pleasure. <laughs> I'd say comfortably, four minutes later, I was presenting him with a Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> right, I need a superpower. America? <laughs> How's that helping? No! Oh, 
Did you read this? Did you read about this American man that's suing his ex-wife to get back the kidney he donated to her while they were married? That is taking the piss. <laughs> Let's talk about travel, yeah? The main reason Americans... Are there any Americans in? For the best. <laughs> the main reason Americans don't have passports is they have trouble fitting in the photo booth. <laughs> Luckily, they've developed Google Earth. I just don't understand it. Why would you become an Islamic fundamentalist suicide bomber? On the off chance, you might get 72 virgins when you die. <laughs> become a Catholic priest and have them now! <laughs> Life's for living, am I right? <laughs> My favourite suicide bomber of the last year. <laughs> Oh, you're better than me because you haven't got a list. Whatever. Um, <laughs> my favourite suicide bomber... Well, I've got a couple that I really like. The Detroit bomber. Do you know this guy that flew into Detroit last Christmas? So he flew into Detroit airport. He had an explosive device in his underpants. The triggering device went off. The explosives didn't detonate. So there was smoke billowing around, but everything didn't blow up straight away. Just smoke billowing. So the other passengers, you can imagine, in America, post 9-11, how they put him out. They didn't run and get a safety blanket and some water and a stewardess. No, they stamped the fucker out. <laughs> Now, normally, I would say, well, you know what? Fuck him. He was trying to kill innocent people as they flew home for Christmas. Fuck him very much. But my heart goes out to this guy, because his court case is coming up in America in the next couple of months, and he's going to have a very tough time in a court of law defending himself, because the prosecution have got it so easy. The prosecution are just going to go, you telling the truth? Yeah, I'm telling the truth. Were your pants on fire? <laughs> Any other belief systems? Creationism. Creationism is quite good. The, the crazies that believe that everything was built in seven days, is it? Yeah. Any creationists in? No. <laughs> Not really my target audience. <laughs> People that amazingly naive. God love them. Or Americans, as we call them. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if you're aware of this. Did you know you're ten times more likely to get mugged in London than you are in New York City? It's because you don't live in New York City. <laughs> See, my favourite news story of the last year came from America. I'm sure you all saw this story in the papers or on TV. It was a story about a man in Utah, an American man, who were, he was out rambling in the wilds of Utah, the beautiful desert landscape, and there was a rock fall, and he got his hand trapped underneath a massive boulder, and he had to sever his own hand in order to walk to freedom. Incredible story about human courage and spirit. Did you all see that story? Yeah. Well, I can't believe anyone saw it and didn't ask themselves the question, because they think it does beg the question, would I be able to do that? I've given it quite a lot of thought, and I think, yes, yes, I would be able to do that. What do I care about an American's hand? <laughs> if it's life or death, I'll cut his fucking head off. <laughs> the other story that sort of tickled me from America, not quite as inspiring, I'll be absolutely honest with you, was the story of an English woman and an American man. This made the papers earlier in the year. They were flying from JFK to London Heathrow, never met each other before, flying in first class. They just knew each other for eight hours, and they were arrested as they came into land at Heathrow. And the reason they were arrested was because the lady was fellating the man. I mean, sucking off. <laughs> yes, as they came into land, the lady was fellating the man. I myself prefer a boiled sweet. <laughs> I just can't quite imagine how that happened. Presumably, at some point, she turned to him and said, My ears are popping. <laughs> Have you got a boiled sweet? And he said, No, no, I haven't, but I've got an idea. <laughs> When you try and say something that's true, earnestly, from the heart, that's when it can fuck up much more spectacularly in your face. I've got a story about this. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. It's a story about PC blowing up in a friend's face. So this mate of mine, it's quite a long story, which is unusual for me, but it's a doozy. You'll enjoy it. This mate of mine runs a comedy club, OK, at a university. He's in his mid-60s now. He's been running it since the early 80s. It's a legendary club. Anyway runs this thing. He's quite a right-on kind of guy. If there's a petition to sign, he's signing it and forwarding the email to me. If there's a march to go on, he's on the march. Very right-on, political, involved kind of guy. Anyway, he runs this comedy club. This incident happened about 12 years ago. He decided to put on a night of American stand-up comedy. There happened to be three American stand-ups in London the same weekend. Okay? So he decided, well, instead of just booking one of them, I'll book all three of them. We'll make it like a themed evening, like the 4th of July. We'll get hot dogs and Budweiser and what have you. It'll be fun. So, Everyone comes to the evening, there's like 300 people in the club, and he's all excited about it. The first act goes up on stage. He's a black American stand-up out of New York City, and he does what I would refer to as an Uncle Tom routine. 
And if you're not familiar with the terminology, that means he did a racist routine. All his jokes were based on negative, racist stereotypes. He got away with it. He was a very charismatic performer. He was very handsome. But the material was, it was terrible. I mean, it was like, at best, it was uh, white guys drive like this and black guys drive like this. Nonsense, ill-observed nonsense. At worst, it was stuff that would make your skin crawl, okay? He totally got away with it that night. He got a big round of applause at the end of about half an hour set, and he walked back to the green room at the club, and my mate went in after him, and he went up to him, and he said, I want a word. You'll get paid for tonight's gig, there's no problem with that, but you would not be welcome back at my club telling those kind of jokes. I think it's racist, I think it's wrong. I don't think it's okay for you to tell racist jokes just because you're a black guy. I think, if anything, you should know better. I think it denigrates the struggle of the African-American people, and you can never say that no one's told you so, because I'm telling you so right now, it's racist and it's wrong. And the comedian went, I agree. When you're right, you're right. But I'm the other black comic, I haven't been on yet. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr, and I, I don't want to impose on your day. I know you just watched a clip of me. You probably had enough of me already. But if you could like and subscribe, that would help me in some way, which I don't fully understand. I think basically, if you, if you like and subscribe, then down the line, I have a more comfortable retirement. I don't know.